Welcome to the 30 day challenge of physics and uh, I'm just gonna have a video up every day for the next 30 days so that you know you can keep on your P's and Q's and you know that I'm with you while you are studying. So let's try to remember how physics started uh, with the seven basic quantities. So you have mass, length, time, temperature, current, amount of substance and luminosity. They all have units that are recognized worldwide. Even though they have other types of units, these are the units that are recognized worldwide. So for mass, you have units of kilograms. Length, you have units of meters. Time, you have units of seconds. Temperature, units of kelvins. Current, units of amperes. Amount of substance, units of moles and amount of um, light or luminosity candela okay so you have to remember that all them SI units because they are recognized worldwide so these are the accepted units from here to Timbuktu to Europe to Spain to Brazil to Mexico all those places once it's a kilograms we recognize it's speaking about mass, right? Remember that there are other types of units that can be used for mass, right? Like stone. Actually, that's for weight. But you hear things like that, like um, for weight, the recognized unit is Newton. But you will hear things like stones, pounds, and all those little um, words that you would use colloquially. So... We want to use something that can be expressed worldwide. We have something called SA units. And once they say, hmm, this has, this was three seconds, you know, I'm speaking about the quantity of time. Once I say this was three kilograms, you know, I'm speaking about the quantity of mass. And then from those seven basic quantities, all other quantities are derived. The units are derived, right? So here we have some examples. There are more, but I put at least four down. So you need to go and look into your book. Remember, this is a, a quick video to keep you on your P's and Q's and just to keep you remembering that there are seven basic quantities and out of those seven basic quantities, we have derived quantities. We have quantities that are derived from the seven basic quantities. Okay. And so here's something like force. Force, um, the unit we use for force would be Newtons, but the quantities that go together to make Newtons is kilogram meters per second squared. We have power. The unit for power is watts, but these are the units that come together to make watts, which is kilogram meters squared per second cubed or per cubic seconds right they have pressure pressure the the unit that you would see for pressure would be pascal but these are the quantity these are the units that come together to produce that overall unit of pascal um so we have kilograms per meter per second squared uh, kilogram per meter second squared right <clears throat> I have to use per when you see the negative sign all right so it would say kg over m s squared that's what you would see and then for frequency now you have per second the overall unit for frequency which is why you see a lot of times is hertz Okay, etc., etc., etc. What are some of the derived units or quantities that you know about? Put them in the comment section below. You may shorten your numbers. Um, you could keep them long if you want, but you could shorten them. And I would have had a video out on standard notation. There are two ways you can do this. You could use standard notation, or you could simply use prefixes. Okay. So standard notation, you write it um, raised to the power of some number, 10. Um, so in this case, you have 2800. The point would have moved 
three spaces to the left and so to get it back to the number that it was before you have to move it three spaces to the right so we have a positive index number and we said 2.8 times 10 to the 3 so that's our exponent or if you use prefixes so 10 to the 3 we know um, is represented by the prefix kilo so in that case if we're dealing with something like length um, we would say 22.8 kilometers so I, I, missed, I missed the part where I have meters here so just imagine meters was in this section right here 2800 meters will be equal to 2.8 kilometers okay <clears throat> and I could fix it so I'm gonna do a little magic trick and you would see it fixed in magic let's do some standard notation okay so let's say we have the number 3000 to write that in standard notation the point is here so you know the point has to, to move one two three spaces to make it shorter right but if it's moving to the left you will have to move it back to the right again to get back the number you had first so then you would say if you had to move it three spaces to the left then my number will be positive and that will be the exponent so that will be 10 raised to the power of 3 and I will just put my number 3 right there okay let's try another one suppose I have 0 0.003 now I have to move my point um, to the right three spaces to the right to go behind the first non-zero figure right so if it's going to the right then we know we have to go back to the left to get back what we had so in moving to the right our exponent will be negative and then we'll have a whole number three right there okay now suppose i have the number three thousand meters okay <coughs> i want to write this smaller just like on top, it's 3 times 10 to the 3 meters. But this is not particularly smaller if you have to write the same amount of characters. Like you have characters meaning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I also wrote one extra character. So this is not writing shorthand really. To write shorthand, you look at the power of 10. And this power of 10 tells us that it's in the kilo. It's a kilo, right? So I can write now, I can replace this power of 10 with the symbol for kilo, which is K. And I could put it right beside M. So we understand it's kilometers. And we put back 3. So now I have 3 characters 1, 2, 3. Whereas before I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 characters. So this is shorthand. Now, suppose I have that same number from on top, and I have this now, I know it's 10 to the 3, and so I have um, seconds, so this is seconds. <coughs> well, let's keep the same um, root, let's keep the same root. Now, I have 10 to the negative 3 as above, and I have the meters here. Well, look at this. This 10 to the negative 3 is represented by milli. milli. So what I would do is just replace that 10 to the negative 3 with the letter or symbol for milli, which is an M, and just put it in front of meters. <coughs> so now I know this is 3 millimeters. <coughs> okay, so I hope this jogged your memory or uh, opened up your understanding. You know for some of you and then here we have the types of prefixes so we have these are the types of prefixes that are used in physics <coughs> the common ones are usually nano micro kilo um, sometimes you get mega so these are the four common ones in here nano micro kilo and mega right 
So you need to remember them. Just remember pico is 10 to the negative 12. Nano is 10 to the negative 9. Micro, 10 to the negative 6. Kilo, 10 to the positive 3. Mega, 10 to the 6. Giga, 10 to the 9. And Terra, 10 to the 12. And uh, right, so I would have put right here an example of the most popular ones. Suppose we have, I'm going to use three, just to keep it uniform, you know, scientists. So let's say uh, I have three, I have three nanometers. That would translate to three times 10 to the negative nine meters. Wow, right? Unless I have three micrometers, that would translate to three times ten to the negative six meters. And let's just say I have three kilometers or kilometers, that would translate to three times ten to the three meters. And let's say I have three megameters. I don't know if that exists. I don't. It's usually megabytes. Um, but let's just imagine three <coughs> megameters. And that <coughs> would translate to three times ten to the six meters. You also see mega being used with hertz because it's so large. So you see megabytes, megahertz, things like that. You don't usually hear people say megameters, but you know, it's all in the name of uniformity. Okay, so that's the end of it all. I hope I was able to jog your memory. This is day one of physics in 30 days. It's a type of 30 day challenge to keep you going. See you tomorrow for day two of the physics 30 day challenge. Have a good week and have a good month. Have a good night, have a good day, have a good everything and stay positive, all right? Bye bye, see you tomorrow.